to support council amalgamations. But one of the one of the interesting things that's come out of this is that Ashfield Council, Leichhardt Council and Marrickville Council are the councils that are most impacted by West Connex. And the advantage of the amalgamation is that it's brought them together. And as a result of that, there's a few actions that are coming that are right across the entire inner west that we haven't been able to initiate at a local government level. Which makes me a bit optimistic that the battle against stage three in particular can be a successful one. Because I do admit that we failed on the destruction of, of, of Health Haberfield and we failed um, stalling off um, the, uh, uh, the interchange at St Peter's. We did knock out the six lane surface road that was expected over the top of the Teddy wetlands. But th this new challenge is a very, very different one because all the councils are now together. At present, there's a council meeting that I'm supposed to be at, and that council meeting is acknowledging what the, uh, the administrator has learned. They had to get a pretty rough introduction in the inner west, and uh, I think he's had an, an even rougher introduction when he's seen the facts about what's actually happening in our community with West Phoenix. He's seen the destruction of Haberfield. He's seen the destruction in St Peter's, and he's well aware of the traffic dump that's going to happen around the interchange. He's also aware of the destruction that's going to happen. Yeah, please, please, let, let um... me... We only have a few minutes left, and I'd like the panel to be able to just address anything. No, no, no. no. Administrator is moving uh, a, a motion in the Independent Council, I mean, not that he requires our supporters' advisors to do that, to devote $500,000, $500,000 to traffic studies around the impacts in St Peter's, in Haberfield, and in Roselle. Now, why, we, and, and that's, those studies are going to happen straight away. There's a huge amount of money that's going to be done for that. And why we need that is because in mid January, in mid-January, what is going to happen is that there's going to be a design brief that's going to come out on all of the details that you've asked questions about here. We don't know the answers to those. Nobody does. The design brief will at least tell us where these stacks are going to be, where the dive sites are going to be, whether the tunnel's going to be shallow or deep, and also the whole arrangements about how they're going to build the thing. Now, we don't quite know where it's going to stop and finish at this stage. We do know that it's starting in the St Peter's Interchange and that it's going to be a very straight line across to wherever it finishes in, in the Roselle area, probably the rail interchange. But that, that information will be vital. And we will need that, and you will need to read that and get hold of that, because in, in May, the whole EIS on this thing is going to happen. So they're going to do this to EIS. In, in May, and we need to respond to that. Now, this way that they've released these EISs with one, two, and three of them has been a real problem for the councils. It's been a problem for a lot of organisations as well because we've had to wait and respond, try and respond to the EISs. I can tell you now that council and many of the groups that are associated with this at, 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 at another level, and I'm talking about the Labour Party because that's one of the Labour Party council, uh, uh, that's why I am a Labour Party council. And that is that for the first time we're coming out now against stage three. We're not going to wait for the EIS. We're not going to wait for the EIS. We didn't support stage two. We didn't support the interchange. And if, if, and I mean, one of the things we have to do in the Labor Party is we've got to acknowledge that, that if, if this project is going to be stopped, it'll be, it'll, it'll really happen around the change of government. Okay, okay. And I ask you to keep your eye on the I mean, information that comes out. Thank you. Thank you. Look, I don't want to be rude, I'm just that we did hope to have a little bit of conversation with some of the local people about their activities that they've talked about. Are there any questions that you'd like to address or something you'd like to say to anybody up here? Yes? yes. I understand that Roar is having a fundraiser on uh, next week at an exhibition in Piedmont Bridge Road, which is where the um, triangle for the dive site in Camperdown is. We're hoping that we might um, get a group of people to man some signs out on the road um, to draw attention um, to that. If you're interested, um, at Piedmont Bridge Road um, over the weekend, we need to get more information and get it out to you. But we'll contact uh, Raw. Would that be the best thing, Peter? Do 
you want to say anything more about that? Uh, I'll just do what he said. Oh, I, sorry, did I call you? I'm sorry, I don't know whether I'm coming with um, uh, what Les is referring to is an exhibition which is at uh, 76 Pilmont Ridge Road. It's on uh, begins Friday night, it's on the weekend, it's on for the next week, Wednesday to Sunday, and it's right in the middle of the triangle, as Leslie says. So the gallery is just a nice excuse to get some leaflets, some, uh, some protest happening. But also inside the gallery, actually, this work by myself, which will be a raw fundraiser. So come and buy a photo, come and buy a video, raise some money for raw. But yes, let's get a protest happening outside that uh, space in Camberdale. Um, I was just wondering, um, uh, how do we get pe uh, the perception to change that it's just some uh, inner city uh, elite people uh, who don't want their, uh, their little patch uh, destroyed? And how do we get, uh, I'm, I'm originally from Western Suburbs, how do we get all those people on board as well? Good question. So the first thing to do is to actually make sure that you're join the West Connects Action Group and the No West Connects Public Transport uh, Facebook and email groups because what you will see is that those campaigns are not campaigns just based here. They're campaigns that are actually supporting groups and actions that happen across the whole, along the whole route. So one of the things that I think is really important to remember and I think that there's two sides to this. One is that as your local member, the work that we do in Parliament to represent the concerns of this community is actually listened to and heard. So I can assure you, and I think that people have some concerns about that, that we're then written off. That meaning that the groups across the whole route have been trying to get with the Premier for two years or more, happened on Thursday as a result of a question that we asked him in Parliament in the last sitting. He made that commitment on the floor of the Parliament to myself. The reason why I say that is because while there might be a general discard and disregard and dismissal from crazy people like the Roads Minister Duncan Gay, that actually the noise and the voices of people in this community campaigning loudly has an impact on what the perception of the Baird government is and that hurts them. And so in one sense we need to be loud and vocal here and recognise that our say in our democracy is just as strong as anywhere else. In terms of engaging people across the route, that has already been happening. I have stood at stations, at public trans transport stations along the route with fellow campaigners that have actually been keep getting people to sign petitions. I know that there are stories that happen in those local papers because I get the media alerts that are anti West Connects and there are letters to the editor saying why are we spending money on this. But the big key is going to be next year when the detail starts coming in around the tolls that people in Western Sydney will pay. And whether you have a view that tolls are good things or bad things in terms of road congestion, the myth and the lie that has been sold to people in Western Sydney is that this will solve their transport needs. But when you look at any costing on the tolls, it will sting them huge amounts of money and it will not actually solve their transport needs. So that's the communication that needs to happen and I would say to you that if you want to help us get that message out there, the best thing to do is to sign up to these groups and actually join when next year they're going out letterboxing. I've seen the draft of the flyer engaging those communities to say we want you to oppose this motorway. Actually, the community around here is pretty clear on our commitment and desire to see more public transport investment. But what we need to do is go out there and help